Okay, uh, let's try this again. Now it's time for our main event, winning more listings with trends and David Knopf. Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? I, don't, I like seeing all these beautiful smiley faces again. So much better than when it was during COVID. And I'd be at the office and I'd look at a screen. I wouldn't see anybody. But I'd have to do a presentation and it was rough. <laughs> Not quite the same. Uh, my first question I've got to ask, what kind of market are we in? Is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? Month of inventory. Yeah. The main way we know through trends. Trends is a free uh, uh, serve, uh, a, a free software that the board of realtors, the directors, voted on to give to all the members that they can use for free. And if you haven't used trends, kind of miss it out. Um, I like to buy and flip houses. I'm on trends quite a bit. So if I'm going to buy a house, I have to try to predict what the market's going to be like in three months. If I don't have a tool like trends, I'm not going to know. Well, today, you're going to know what kind of market you're in because I'm going to show you. You're going to absolutely see whether we're in a buyer's market or a seller's market. And when you play with trends, it kind of, it'll fool you. Because sometimes I think, oh, no, no, we're in a seller's market. No, no, no doubt. But once you get past 325, 400,000, the market changes. <laughs> and sometimes you go from a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. Or it changes at the level market. But those are the things that we're going to go over today. How many of you have used trends? Not many. Um, I did a. The city of Bakersfield had a, um, a bid go out for seven properties on Hard Street. They were looking for a listing agent. And when they, when they called us to put in our bid, we put in our bid. Uh, I'm sorry. Is that better? Okay. So uh, the city of Bakersfield gave us a, uh, a bid, an opportunity to bid on the listing of seven buildings. Uh, there were apartments on R Street. And I shouldn't say apartments. They were homes in an HOA. And we got the bid. And one of the things that I submitted with my bid was a trends report. When we were awarded the bid, the thing that they said to me, which I thought was pretty fantastic, goes, I have no idea how much time you spent on this report, but this is the reason why you got the listing. I didn't spend two minutes on it. But it looks like I spent days on it. And it's an excellent report. You just got to do a few things, push a button, and it prints it out. And I was impressed because engineers love it, especially uh, lawyers, CPAs, because you can use trends not only to get your buyers to lower their the price of their home, but you could also use it to get uh, buyers to raise their offer. How many times have you wrote an offer for like 30,000 less and never get it? It's a lot of waste of time, isn't it? Do you get frustrated? Well, you need some, uh, you need a tool to talk to them to let them understand what the market is. And what trends does is that tool. It'll make the buyers pay a little more and it also make the sellers if they're overpriced come down a little bit. It's a great tool. So where do we find it? If you log into the MLS up there on the top, you'll see across this toolbar, you'll see the word trends. You just click on it. Okay, so this is a, the trends, this is a report based on Kern County. These are all the properties that are going through the MLS. Now, unfortunately for us, it takes about seven or eight days before we get the last month report. So we're still looking at March report over here down you'll see down there at the bottom and the last report we have right now is march so i can't show you april yet but i have a feeling april is going to be a, a, a change in april um but that's not available yet it takes about seven or eight days and then that one will be available for you to look at 
But what's interesting about this is the for sale properties. If you look in January of 22, we had 458 houses on the market. And then all of a sudden we started, we dipped a little bit and then we just started picking up. In the month of October, we had 1,239 houses for sale. That's quite a bit of houses. And it was also in our slow months. Do you guys agree that we're usually slow in October, November, and December? If you look at trends, it's constant. It really is. Nobody wants to move on the holidays. But I also think agents don't want to sell on the holidays, too. <laughs> it's like you guys just turn the switch off. We're going on vacation or something. Um, so you see, we had a lot of inventory during that period. And then all of a sudden in November, it started coming down. And it wasn't coming down because of sales. It was because of interest rates. And I'll tell you what, as they were raising the interest rates, sellers were saying to themselves, I don't want to sell my house now because if I sell it, I got to go buy something else. And instead of having a 3 to 5% interest rate on your home, now I'm going to be anywhere from 7 to 9.5. Key, I think. And when I say nine and a half, if you have bad credit, I'm not joking. I've seen interest rates as high as nine and a half now. And if you're doing investment properties, it's eight and a half is low. So you got to think about that. So that's going to change things. Those interest rates impact us. And so as sellers decide not to sell, our inventory started to shrink. And if you look last month, we had 665 houses on the market. We had 696 houses that were sell pending. And we sold 514 houses that month. And all the data is right down there. You can't miss it. It's on the bottom. It's in the far uh, right-hand side, your right-hand side. But there's more than just this data for you on trends. There's so much information in trends. And this is why I like it. So now we come over to trends here. I got to get back to the top. And you're going to see this toolbar. What's the average price per square foot on a house right now? I agree with that, but I'm talking about in general for Kern County. Huh? 214? I heard 230? Boom. How about 205? Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody who's already has a copy. As you can see, and I'll stroll this down a little bit so you guys can see it. Last year in January 2022, it was about 202. And we got as high as 219 and we kind of stayed there and then we dropped back down. And now we're start we came back up. We dropped a little bit in March, but I expect in the next two to three months that we'll get this number back up to 209, 210, maybe even as high as 212. And that's consistency with what the market does because do you think our peak months are June, July, and August? Everybody, that's when we sell the most poems. And I expect if you look last year, look at March, we saw uh, it was 211 in April, it was 219 in um, May, 216, and in June, it was 218. Those were our peaks. And that's why there were more, the cost per square foot went up. What's beautiful about this system is we can customize this for any area. And I'm going to get to that to you after I go through everything else. All right. Days on the market. How long are these properties staying on the market? Anybody got a guess? 39 days, 40 days? Huh. Mm -hmm. That's, that is absolutely true because I put one on the market just the other day and it went in like three days. So can it go in three days? Absolutely, uh, if it's priced right. But right now the average is 39 days. And what's interesting about that, it's selling for about 98% of the value, uh, the listed amount on average. So if you're listing it at 200,000, you're selling it for about 2% less. 
which comes out to about 196,000. That's pretty close. And if you'll look, remember when we were getting 15 offers on our properties and they were $20,000 over asking? Well, back then we were averaging 102, 101, 102 over appraised value on an average. That's pretty good information, I think. Do you think this, this information will help you get more listings? Absolutely. The average property for sale right now is 452,000. The average sales price on those is 356,000. And again, this is not one area. This is Kern County as a whole. You're absolutely right. If I pick out Rosedale and I pick out that area, this number is going to be much higher. Okay. If I pick something in central Bakersfield, it's going to be much lower. Okay. Or if I pick something in a different area, those all have a, uh, effects. The location, location, location. We've heard that how many times in our lives, how important it is. That does subtract, but what we're doing right now is just an average over all of Kern County. So if there was a house in Lake Isabella on our MLS, it would include that. Okay, so anything in our MLS, this is what it's showing us. Now we get to the fun part. Months of inventory. This is how you determine whether we're in a seller's market or a buyer's market. Does anybody have an idea how many months of inventory we have? I got two. I got one month. One month. On an average, we have 1.3. And that is based on closed sales. But for me, the most important thing that I look at is absorption rates. And absorption rates, in my opinion, really is the driver of whether or not we're in a seller's market or if we're in a buyer's market. The absorption rate, if it's 16.67% or less, that means we are in a buyer's market. If it's 33.3% or higher, that means we're in a seller's market. Anything between that 17.6 and that 33.3 is just a neutral market. It's kind of where we really want to be so that it's kind of like fair for both the buyer and the seller, and hopefully we'll get more sales. What do you guys think our absorption rate is right now just on the sales part? Anybody got a higher? Are we higher than 70? I'm talking about, now this is all current. This is not no one area. This is all prices. All houses. Do you think we're over 33.3 or do you think we're under? Under, over? Based on closed, this see where it says absorption rate? Based on closed sales, we're at 77.3%. What did I just, I showed you a quick guide here. If you read this down here, it'll tell you on the bottom that if you have uh, a rule of thumb, 16.6% or less is a buyer's market. 33.33% and higher is a seller's market. So if we're at 77.3, what kind of market are we in? Definitely. And look at the trend. We were as high as 159%. And then all the interest rates started going up. And look what, how it started dropping and it continued to drop and continue to drop. And now, but we also went through uh, October, November, and December. And that affects everything that we do because our market, what? Slows down. Plus the interest hikes, that's why that dropped. I didn't hear that. The inventory also drops. And when the inventory drops, the demand, if the demand is still there, now, does you, any of you guys remember when interest rates were 23%? <laughs> I got a few. I remember the first house I bought, it was 12 and a half. And I bought the house anyway. 
Oh, you got 18. So 1981. Okay. So, so we will buy a house, even if it is 23%, because why we have to have a place to live and it's important to us. So I think the buyers are going to start buying. They're just, they just been spoiled at two and a half and 3%. <laughs> and now they have to pay seven and a half. My son just bought a house. He paid 7.5 for his house uh, interest rate. And he had a hundred and something like 150,000 down and still paid it. It's rough, but, but it, but it's reality. Even at that interest rate, people will buy a house and we still haven't hit 20%. So we're good. But now this is based on closed sales. These are the number of sales that are closed um, versus our listings. Okay. Now, our absorption rate for pendings. And I do look at this really close. I look at both. And what I normally do is I pick out an area. So, so for example, if I'm buying a house in one, two area, nine, three, three, one, two, I'll set this diagram up for that area. And I will focus on the two things that I think that are the most important absorption rate on closes and the absorption rate on um, sell, sell, uh, pending sales. And the reason I focus on those two, I have learned all the years that I've been using this program that they are right on. They really show a true picture of what our market is doing. So do you think on sales pending, it's still a seller's market? And yes, it is. I remember the magic number is 33.33%. Anything above that is a seller's market. So now you can use these this tool to help you tune in on where your price should be on your houses. Whether or not if you're work, if you're in a seller's market, you know now for a fact. All you have to do is pull this up. We looked at two key things. We looked at trends on absorption rate on sales and absorption rate on pendings. And if both of those are over 33%, 33.33%, you're definitely in a seller's market. And what's interesting about this, even in November and, and December, the lowest the absorption rate got, we were still in a seller's market overall. Now I can show you, I can do things to change that. If I change the sales price to over $400,000, it will change. It will change more to a buyer's market, okay? Because we have, why? We have less buyers that can afford to buy a $400,000 house. The nice thing about it is though, if you're going out and taking a listing that's $700,000, you can show this information to your seller. And you can tune it in to match his house, his area. If you want to go area 22, you can go area 22. If you want to go area 61, you can go area 61. I'd be careful of zip codes when you're using this because you can actually use zip codes to determine what area you want. But when you use 93308, you're going to get stuff in Oildale and stuff in Rosedale on the other side of the freeway. That's when you want to, you don't want to use the, uh, the zip code. That's the time where you want to use the uh, area 61. Make sense? It, no, but let me, let me just kind of show you. I'll, 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 I'll come over here and do one. Here's one for Kern County, okay? Now we can come here and click and we can uh, pick an area. And here it's all Kern area, or we can just say just area 10, central location, Bakersfield. And we got to unclick all. <laughs> so now I'm just picking section 10 and I'm just doing an easy one, but it's real easy once you start coming over here and all you do is just hit sh show chart. Now we're only going to get things in area 10. And look what it did. Look in December, it dipped down to 8%. Uh-huh. Uh, this is area. Did you click a box there? Yes. Okay. So here. 
Well, here you can pick area, city, or zip code. Okay. So I went with area. And then you got, when you pick your area, when you first get it, when you first look at it, all areas will be checked. You got to uncheck that because if not, you're going to get the same report. But if you click that, click that, and let's just say we pick area 22, that's the area you want now. Scroll down. Show chart. And then scroll up. There's probably a reason why in area 22 of Oildale that this is higher. Anybody understand that? Anybody have an idea why? Thank you. That's absolutely right. It's price. If the average house in that area is selling for around 200,000 or less, you're probably getting eight or nine offers on each property that you list. But if once it starts to climb over that 325 to 400,000 range, you'll see no matter what you do, it will change. The beauty of all this, let's just say you wanted to print out a report. You click print. And this will pop up. You can pick what things you want to add in your report. I'm just clicking a few buttons here real quick. Give me a second. But this is how fast I, this is how long it took me to do my report for the city. And I hit create report. And this is what a report looks like. Okay, what was the question? Uh, that's the area. Area, uh, we, up, uh, Oh, April, 2023 that, okay. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I probably just, cause my, my settings might've been set up to April, 2023, but we have no report for April. Okay. That was, I didn't, I didn't go through and customize the settings, but you can actually go through there and customize all your settings to each property, uh, the dates you want. And it probably was just set on April, 23, uh, uh, April of 2023. That's probably why. But it's going to show you that. Um, I was just trying to do a quick report to see so you guys can see what would show up on your report. And you guys can all customize this. You're going to have your, your cost per square foot in area 22 or, yeah, area 22. You're going to have um, everything that we just talked about. What the uh, sales price is going for 101% over uh, the average list price in that area. And you can see the market went down to 23. We were at 39 when you looked at all of Kern County, but that goes to show you there in Oildale in section 20, area 22, they are actually going in 23 days as their average days on the market. So if you want to sell houses faster, where should you market? <laughs> Smart people, I like that. <laughs> And um, and then it'll get down in here. I'm sorry, guys. It's just not strolling the way. Oh, come on, get up there. This is again the sold price and the for sales price. So here, um, the for sale price is at 324, and but the actual average sales price is 282. And I want to get to the absorption rates. And then here's one for the absorption rate. And you can see you're at 172.7%. So to do a report, it's really simple, but you want to come through this side right here and you want to customize it. Everything in here you can customize. Uh, you can pick the area that you want. If it's, um, or if you want to go by the city, if you want to do that, you can pick the city. Again, you can pick zip code, but I prefer using the area, especially when you're talking when you do talk about 93308, you got to be careful because you will make a mistake there um, if you have a property in area 61. So if you pick the area. I think we have a question, David. Okay. Um, you said you can customize for your information. Is it just the preparer's name or can you add your branding to it too? Add your what now? Your branding, your logo and all of that. No. 
Yeah, yeah, you can't. Just you, the you can't, name? Yeah, you can just okay. add your name. Okay. Yeah. So when, when you go in there and you put your name in there, which is really kind of cool, um, you put your name in there, it shows that this form was prepared by you. And like I said, when you when they look at that, it's pretty impressive, especially if you do it in color. Spend a little extra money. Isn't, isn't a listing worth it? What about condition? You know, because nowadays you have those fixers and then you have those primo houses. Does this accommodate for like the condition of the property? Poor, fair, average? No, it does not. No, it'll just tell you what, what, what you're going to have to do. You're going to run your own comps anyway. This tool is mostly mostly set up so that you can t get an idea of what's going on in that area and let your seller know. So if if you got a house that needs fifty thousand dollars worth of work, you can basically say, "Look, if you fix it up, this is what you can get for that property. You should be somewhere around this target." Uh, what those actual costs for repairs? You better be careful right now. Because I just did a hot water heater at my house, or not my house, one of my rental properties. And I thought it was going to be about $1,500, and it was $2,400. A water heater. So contractors are coming up on prices. So don't quote prices, please. <laughs> Make, tell them they need to go get a bid. But you can use that tool to kind of say, well, if you want, if you know it's going to cost $50,000 to fix it up, you might be able to sell it as is for this amount, but you can help. this can help you figure out what the actual current market value would be if it was all fixed up. Hang on for a minute. They're waiting for the microphone. They're going to come right to you. Um, oh, on areas that are very large, like Area 51, Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's areas on area 51 that are much lower, kind of like the same scenario that um, Oildale has. How do you how do you separate those? Because the zip code is also the same, 93307. So you can't use that zip code either. Yeah, that's when I probably use a zip code and I might use the area. I might put those together. Okay. Together. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, like a, uh, like a 51, you know, and then a 93307. I might put those two together. So then it's only the, it's going to hit the zip code and it's also going to hit the area. You're going to just try to play with it guys and just customize it and learn how to customize it for what the house that you're working on. But once you, it's really easy to do, you just get in here and start working with it. And like I said, everything, all the changes you're going to make are all on the left-hand side here. They're all right through here. You can pick out the date range you want. Go on down. If you want to start getting crazy and start putting in square footage, pools, all that stuff, you, you have all this information down here that you can customize and make this for your property. And it's not hard to do, guys. I'm serious. You spend about 15 minutes one day, and I think you'll be up here teaching the class next. <laughs> Any other questions? On what you just said, can you save that search so you can keep going back to it or do you have to recreate it every time? No, you, you, uh, well, we can save it. So like, uh, no, I, I don't say I save the report. That's what I do. Save I the save the report. report. I don't but save, you can't I don't save the, no, like I've never sa saved the, uh, in a particular area, like yeah. where I, out there, area 34, where I live, yeah. you can't save that. You have no. to put all the information in every time, every time, but, but it's going to okay. take you 30 seconds no, to a minute. Just, it's really super yeah. fast. Okay. Thank you. But I saved the reports. I'm a big, I like saving the reports. Okay. So with that being said, when you go in to print it mm -hmm. and you can print and then the way mine is, it's over on the right-hand side. Okay. You can click on that print or save it. Yes. Do you have that option when you go to print it? So you could actually like what that, that's your saying. printer that's your printer setup and so on most printer setups you come over here it says print here yes and when you hit print we're not hooked up to a printer um, but you pick out what you want to print and then you'll create the report it'll be in a pdf and so then you can either save it or print it to your print take it to your printer and print it when it's it saves it to a pdf every time 
Hey, Dave, when, when you started this, you said that you use this to forecast three months out when you flip properties, and then you made a comment that you thought that the 205 would climb to 212. What specifically are you seeing in these reports that are, t that are leading you to that conclusion? What I'm seeing is history. And the history that I'm going to, I'm going to show it to you guys. Let me get off of here. Okay, so let me get back to all of Kern County again. So give me a second. I am all on all Kern County. Never mind. Okay. When you look. There we go. When you look at the average price per square foot and you start over here and you see in March of 22, April, May, and June, we were way over 210. We were in the 218s, almost 220 as a whole. And now I'm looking at the absorption rate and I'm looking both on sales and pending and I'm looking at low inventory. What does that usually mean? That means that people are going to be more apt to write four or five or six offers on each property. That's going to happen. I really feel that. When that happens, the average cost per square foot is going to go up. It has no choice. So I'm thinking that it's going to be somewhere around the 212 level at the height in these next three months. It's just a feeling but it's based on what I've seen in the past on the absorption rates on sales and the absorption rates on um, pendings. And there's no inventory. Do you use this instead of comps? Is this the only thing you use? I use both. This is more, I use this more as a business tool than anything else. So if I'm out, depending on who I'm working with, if I'm working with an engineer, I'm doing this report. And matter of fact, I, I, I'm used to telling everybody, I'm used to telling everybody when I teach orientation on onboarding and I, and I tell everybody, how many of you guys use trends and nobody raises their hands. And so I make a deal with them. If you use trends and you get the listing, you buy me lunch. <laughs> you use trends and you don't get the listing, I'll buy you lunch. No, I haven't bought a lunch yet but no one's buying me lunch either. I think they're getting listings and they're not telling me. <laughs> what exactly is absorption rate? The absorption rate is the number of pendings versus the number of active properties. So right now, just a second, I gotta get back to it. Right now we have the, we have 696 houses that are pending right now, and we only have 665 houses. So when you look at that, you can tell that if we continue to sell at 696 houses every single month, that we have that many pending and we only have this many listings, the absorption rate, they're going out the faster than they're coming in. And that's where we have a seller's market. Okay. Here's another thing, though. I want to give you something else that will work better for you. See this quick guide? This will explain to you about absorption rates. It'll tell you everything you want to want. On every single page, they have market highlights, and they have this quick guide. And it tells you everything you want to know about every section. And you just come over here and click this, and you come down here, months of inventory based on that. If you want to know more about absorption rates, you click there and then you come here and hit the quick guide and it'll talk to you about the absorption rate. And it's based on closed sales. Okay. So all that information is right there for you. Next question. I do want to say though, last time I predicted that the price would go up to 215 and I predicted it three months ahead of time and I was wrong. It was 214. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I can be wrong from time to time. 
First, I just want to say that have someone like Dave come up that has his experience and his intuition and, and the way he's he's thrived in every market. It's impressive to come to this and have him share that with us. So thank you. All the charts to me kind of seem to make sense, except for the one that the list price versus sales price. They're all kind of linear and predictable. But on the list price versus sales price, there was a there was a divergence in this last month or two that doesn't make doesn't follow the pattern. I don't know if that if that's just an anomaly, if you would describe that as an anomaly or something that that tells you something. Yeah, it, it's um I'm thinking that we're now in the market that we're in and everyone thinks it's a starting to see it's a seller's market and the inventory is really low and I'm thinking the sellers are saying, "Hey, I want this for my house or I'm not selling it." And I got that gut feeling. And I've already heard it a couple of times. Uh, I'm also serve as your ombudsman. So I'm hearing it from other agents when they call me, but I'm also seeing it in real life when I go out for a listing. And I've had a couple of people that I've already turned down that I didn't want to list their house because they want to list it for way more than what the market can bear. So I think that's, those are for sale. The two, the 452 is what their average sales price is right now. And I think they're just hopeful, you know, hoping that they'll get that price because of low inventory. But you can see they're selling for only three fifty six. Again, this is something where you can show your your uh, homeowner that wants to sell it for four fifty two. Look, the average sales price is three fifty two or three fifty six. We need to bring your house down. And and use that and comps. You always use your comps too. Any other questions? Okay. Come on, come on. But I want to make an announcement before I'm done. <laughs> I'm not taking anything away from Dave. I appreciate you very much, Dave. Um, three things that I wanted to share with you. Uh, one, Judy said, can you save? One thing you might want to look at is this post to web. So you put in all your criteria, you show the cart, post to web, pick what report you want to use. You'll have an actual um, active link. So it updates automatically each month. So you can put your criteria. You can put it on your website. You can send it in your email. Um, when people click on it, they get the most current that's available here. So that might be your closest you're going to get. Well, you're going to get the HTML code and you'll frame it. Yeah or make a link for it. Yes, exactly. Uh, the other thing is this market summary. So what some people might want to do is if they do a newsletter, instead of printing, they save these image or graphs as a image, and then they'll go ahead and uh, copy paste that summary and include that in their newsletter. And the last thing I want to touch on is down here, this data table. You can actually copy paste all this information to Excel and manipulate it. So anyway, I know Dave knows this, but well, I don't. You, I don't do that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you because when I look at an auction property, I'm going to go buy a property at an auction to flip. Um, I'm going to customize my report to that property. So I'm going to look at the square footage. I'm going to be 200 feet over, under, 200 feet above. I'm going to I'm going to look in that area. I'm going to try to determine what the value is. Plus, I'm going to do my comps and I'm also going to go by the age of the property. I'm going to go 10 years over and 10 years under. So if it's a 1990, I'm going to go up to 2000 and I'm going to go down to 1980 on the housing. And I'm going to take all that data plus my comps and then I'm going to go look at the house. And then I've got another chart that I use where I could determine based on the square foot, if I put a one in, it'll calculate what it's gonna cost to paint the interior of the house. If I put a one in on carpet or flooring, it'll tell me what it's gonna cost to fl um, floor that house with new carpet and new flooring, whether it be tile or vinyl flank flooring, whatever I'm gonna do with it, it'll calculate it for me. Um, painting the interior, windows, doors. A common practice for me, if it looks really bad on the outside, it's probably really bad on the inside. <laughs> and so, you know, if you don't get to go inside and actually look at the property, you got to make some judgment calls. And this, 
this other tool that I use just helps me get closer to what it's going to cost to repair the property. And it's set up so I know the value of the property. I know what it's going to cost to repair the property, how much it's going to cost to buy the property, what it's going to cost to sell the property because I got to pay another agent commission. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> and then I know how much profit I want. And then down on the bottom line, it tells me I got to buy that house for less than that amount. Got some more questions? So what is that tool you use? It, I made it up. It's a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that I designed. Is it for sale? I mean, oh, yeah. I, you know, you know what? <laughs> I did sell it once for five grand. I'm not joking. But I, I took somebody out. I showed him how to go to the auction and buy houses. I I helped him under. I gave him a copy of that program that I used, and I was with him for probably about two and a half, three weeks. And the deal was he'd give me five grand for it. So yeah, I'd probably do that again. Maybe I probably won't have time. I got an announcement to make. Oh. Wait, we have another question before you. Oh, go ahead. I just have a quick question. Um, have you ever compared the results that trends give you um, with RPR? No, but I have used RPR before in the past, and it seems like RPR is off a little. Okay. And I, I'm going to say to the high side, in my opinion. The, the ones that I've looked at, I, I don't tend, I, I really focus on the MLS and I'll focus on trends. Um, trends is more of what I'm trying to do is predict what the future is gonna be, especially if I'm gonna buy and flip a house. Uh, I don't wanna buy when the market's going down. I don't wanna pay too much for the property because then I'm gonna be stuck with it. So uh, I really watch that closely, um, but I'm trying to, or my goal is anyway, when I, I look at the comps to give me the value of an area and that property, and then I use all my other tools to make sure that I don't overpay for the property. Yeah, it's more than just one tool. So on my phone, um, I have the MLS app, whatever it says, but this is not on there, correct? Yeah, it's on trends. It's no, on I mean, on, on my mobile phone. It needs to be put on. Uh, under, I don't think, I, you know what? I've never looked on my phone. So on my phone, I used to be able to, I think it was links that you click on on the top and it used to let me do the desktop version on my phone, but I haven't been able to do that in a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it'll say desktop version. Oh no. Um, admin. Sorry. It's not links. It's, ad it's admin, not links. And then see, it's not on there anymore. Mine used to be, it used to say desktop. Oh, not in the app. Yeah, you have to go to the website. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. On the any other questions? Okay, so I I do have a quick announcement I want to make um, because I think it's kind of important. Um. And I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, I am in contract to purchase the Cobalt Banker in Tehachapi and Ridgecrest and California City. And um, looking, me and Darren going to become CB bro brothers, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, we made the announcement in California City and we made the announcement in Tatchby. The problem that we're running into right now, I'm still working with the executives at Cobalt Banker. And so I've got to, I got to make a decision. Am I going to be Cobalt Banker or if I'm going to be Frontier? And I have to make that decision in the next, in the next five to 10 days, uh, maybe 15 days, but it's really up to the executives and, and uh, see how they'll work with me. But uh, I'm just pretty excited about this. This is a big move. We manage right now about 2,000 properties with this acquisition. We'll manage probably close to 26, 2,700 properties. So pretty excited stuff. All right. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I went to a luncheon when we made the announcement, I was wearing a blue shirt like this. And they go, oh, you're already wearing the Cowell blue. And I go, no, that's Frontier blue. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be mistaken. Any other questions before I go? Well, thank you guys very much. Oh, you had a question? Okay. Well, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it.